everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm really, really excited to share this lantern with you. Now, those of you that were with me last year would have made last year's lanterns or seen last year's lanterns and lots of you are making them again this year. But I've had the idea to do this taller version for a while. My mum actually has a glass version of this. Hers is wooden with like gold. Um, but I've seen a few of my friends have these ones where they're metal on the sides here and then all glass and they've got candles and all kinds of things inside them and I thought it'd be really nice to do but I just never really got around to doing it and then Trimcraft sent me the most amazing brand new double-sided glitter cardstock it's just absolutely phenomenal stuff and when something new comes onto the market it then kind of opens up your mind and you start to think of new things to create and I thought it's going to work perfectly for this lantern so I was able to make it and it is very easy and very quick to make so I know we're, we're getting close to Christmas now this wasn't something I was going to add into this year's series I've just slipped this one in with all the others that are already done so it is something that you can quickly do this didn't take me very long to do at all so as soon as I received the paper the cardstock a few days ago I've made this one. I'll show you all the cardstock in a moment, but the idea for this is, is that it's not all necessarily just for Christmas. This piece here I have stuck on this because I will put this away with my Christmas decorations and bring it out each year for Christmas. However, if you find a way that you can just maybe attach this, you can then take it off and you could keep this as a nice home decor piece throughout the year. You know, it looks nice on your windowsill, it's lovely in the hall. The idea is, is that there's no base on this so that you can put anything underneath it. So you can change it up, you know. So I've got some really nice big pillar candles that I'm going to put in this with the lights wrapped around. And then the battery pack here can kind of just hang out behind, you know, be hidden away. So all you see is that. But this is very tall. This is 12 plus then it's got another six inches with the roof. And you'll recognise the roof here. It's kind of my go-to roof now, really, that I do. I used it on the Christmas cottage, I've used it on the Santa's workshop, and I've also used it on the bird box. It's just really easy to do. So you can also go in the top there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack my rice light up on the side here, probably on both sides, just so that the lights stay up the top and then kind of fall down. It's just so, so pretty. It's five and a half by five and a half by then 12 plus some more. And I've also added in this lovely piece there. I wouldn't hold it with that, but it, it just looks nice and kind of, it's how those others look. But I love that you can just put anything you want underneath this. And I just think it looks really, really pretty. So, okay, so here are the glitter cards that I've got. So I have A5 Premium Adhesive Glitter Card. Okay, so I've got some nice ideas for that one and I'll be sharing those. And you get 12 sheets, 130 GSM, and it's all non-shed. So you're not going to be covered in glitter, which is always good. And it's also acid and lingam-free. So if you are doing any kind of um, scrapbooking or albums and you're using photos, then it's going to be friendly towards those things. So that's that one. And then here I've got the three 12 by 12s. So this is double-sided, 350 GSM. And here you have red, yellow, green, blue, purple, and pink. And it also does say that it cuts on all major electronic cutting machines. Okay, so those of you that do use your digital machines, this is going to be perfect. And then I have, sorry, two um, 12 by 12. This is the A4. So this is the Christmas, I guess, your colours. You've got your red, your green and white. The white's lovely, you can see there. Really, really is lovely. very nice. And then again, 350, 12 sheets, non-shed. And then this is the one I'm using. I've just quickly taken it out of the packaging. So this one here you get... Gold, silver, I'm going to say rose gold, and then a darker silver. So maybe this is the dark one. This is the one I'm using. It's beautiful. It's so nice. You get, you must get three sheets of each. And there you can see. Lovely. Then there's your rose gold. Yeah, three sheets of each. Isn't that stunning? It's just like the Dovecraft rose gold that I used a lot earlier in the year. But obviously now, this is double-sided. But it's just beautiful cardstock. So there is your, yeah, so it's more of a whiter silver. That's more, I guess, like a black silver. <laughs> and then, you see that? And then there's that gorgeous gold. Oh my gosh, it's lovely. So, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I've been able to get something Christmassy in using this cardstock. It's going to be used a lot throughout the year now, so you're going to see it feature. But um, it's nice to make something like this. So let me just get that to one side. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to make the actual case. Okay, so I've got I've done three already, and two of them I've actually already stuck together. So we start to get the shape there. And then there's the second one, which we're going to stick this one to in a moment. So what you need is a, well you want four pieces that are six 
by 12 but don't worry if you don't have 12 okay so whatever it is that you're using whether you've, you choose to get this card the glitter card or not you can have it shorter okay so the, the, the 12 inches is the height of this so you can reduce that down by whatever you want but the width I'm going for is six. Now along the six inch side you do want to score at five and a half and I'm using my metal stylus. Now because it's a 350 GSM and it's double sided you do want to you know, add some pressure to that just to really kind of squash the fibres with the glitter and then just burnish and it's really nice you don't get any cracking and this is a real textured cardstock, but there's, there's no cracking at all with that, which is wonderful. And then you also want four pieces of acetate. So I'm using the, let me grab it, this one here. So it's the Paper Mania. It's my go-to acetate. And it's um, it's just a heavyweight one, 10 pack. And it's by Do Cross Paper Mania. So I used two sheets and from that I got four pieces. So these are five and a quarter and then I've kept that whole length of 12. So whatever you do, decide to reduce if you do, make sure you do the same for your acetate. We're just going to do that for the minute. Now, I want to show you how to cut the inside because you don't need any dies for this one. So I'm just going to grab my cutting knife and my ruler and really simple cutting. So I'm using my grid going to line it up with one of the squares it doesn't matter which one but because these are all one inch squares it's obviously works well for me because I work in inches so what I'm going to do is first of all grab I don't want a pen I'm just going to use a pencil so I'm going to pop my ruler so it lines up with the half inch you want to come down half an inch basically so I can see mine is there and then you want to come in half an inch so I can see just by eyeballing there's half an inch here so if I come down to there there is Come down half an inch and come in half an inch. And you just want to mark. So I'm just leaving like an, an indent because it does show up on this. And then again this side here, so you want to come in half an inch. Actually you want to come in from, you've got your score line, you want to come in half an inch from the score line. So ignore the half inch scored piece here because this is your tab. So you want to come in from that score line, you want to come in half an inch. So I'm just going to follow this line here. Okay. If I just bring in one here, in case you're kind of unsure what I mean, come down half an inch, come in half an inch and marked there. And then I've done just done the same there. So I've ignored that fold. You want to come in from the score line, come down half an inch, come in. And we're going to then cut to meet all of these points. So I should have now, yeah, I can just see, as long as you can see them, I'm, I'm using a pencil because it's grey. So, you know, I'm going to cut most of this away, but I can also feel it. It's, it is it is strange getting used to working with a, I'm just going to actually pierce through there, a double-sided glitter. It's, it's wonderful. It's really, really nice. Okay, so I can see mine there. And then I'm going to come down again, just line this up so everything's nice and straight. And so I'm just going to come in use my ruler for this just keep everything straight so I'm going to come in half an inch and again from that score line come in half an inch so again I'm just gonna pierce it through there because that's all going to get cut away there we go next with your cutting knife you want to join your holes or your markers so try and keep it in one kind of cut and you'll see now cut this away so there is you know you get this great big panel that you don't need but then you know obviously I'm definitely not wasting that I'll be keeping every single piece of this I have so many amazing ideas it's funny when something new comes onto the market it just my mind goes and I just start thinking right what can I do with this because it's been quite a few times when I've made things and I thought oh, I wished it was double-sided or you know it's and now it's here so thank you <laughs> so let's just do this one here Okay, so you can see now, and then I've just got this last piece to do, so. There we go. And because there's so much glitter on it, if you've cut over slightly, don't worry, you're really not going to see it. So it's, it's another good project for kind of, it's a forgiving project, that's what I, I like to use. So, okay, so you want to make sure you've got your tab on the left hand side. Now I'm using red tape for this, I just find it works very well with any kind of textured cardstocks. And you want to run it along so it's hogging the inner side, you know, the frame. 
and this is it's three no it's not it, well yeah it's just under it must come up it must be like three eighths of an inch and then it's it's just under one centimeter so you don't want it to cover the whole area because this is only five and a quarter I didn't want to do five and a half because this will come up and I just didn't want it to cause any kind of pressure like buckling or anything but when I stick this down I can see that the acetate just covers that red and again the same side so just yeah you just don't want any stickiness kind of hanging out the sides because um, well nothing's going to stick to it so it won't harm it but yeah just try and a quarter inch one will be fine like a thinner one just show you one of those ones that'll be fine you can use that if you want but make sure you you stick it so it's hugging the inner frame not the outer edges so I'm just going to run it along here so I'm just taking all of the backing off and then you just want to because it's the full length it's 12 inches so you can go right to the very top and you just want to make sure you've got it kind of sitting equally within that piece so I think about there and then just let that kind of roll down and it is just like there is no adhesive it is fantastic because the red glue or tape sorry when you push it down hard enough and you get all the air bubbles out it should just disappear and you, it, it's you know it's not too visible even when you use a normal card stop but you look on that now and you can't see it so it is just looking so nice when you now look through this so this one here you know look you can see the glitter on the inside it just makes it look like a really lovely finished piece you know people will look at it and be like well where did you join it where's because you just can't see it so what you want to do now is stick so turn it back over so the tab is on the right hand side I've got a bit of tinsel there and you want to run some double sided tape again along that but you want to hug the fold not right up to it but just be more over to that side so I'm just going to run that all the way down I'm going to take the backing off and you want to stick one over the top so and just again make sure the top and bottom line up so then look, you can see in there just how nice it all looks and now so you do that so you have two pieces like this so I just need to run another bit of my tape along this side here and then grab the other ones and just stick that just as you did before flip it over just make sure that's really stuck down and then just as you were making any kind of gift box fold those both over and pop the one that you've just taken the sticky tape off of and then this one should just fold down but what I don't want is you to be able to see so I'm just going to pull that out just a little bit there we go because the tab's half an inch and this is half an inch so that you want them to just line up perfectly but can you see now so look at that how awesome does that look absolutely love it so it's it's almost ready we just now need to do the the roof and then it's all about the decoration so let's pop that to one side and start doing the roof it's very similar to the roof that i've used for the christmas cottage for the santa's workshop for the bird box so it's just a really handy one and it's really easy to do because it's deconstructed now so because i've used the full width of the cardstock 12 inches i have to add a hinge in if you're coming down shorter or um yeah if you're using a shorter length you could incorporate this hinge into the top of this because you'll see what i'm doing there i'm just going to stick that in behind this piece so that we have this here to stick a, you know the roof onto so if you are, what you would do is just on one of your sides as you would score at the top here so you have this half inch piece. So there are ways around it but I mean if you're a little bit unsure then just do it like this, it's not the end of the world. But again because it's all that same double sided you're not going to see you know from the inside it's still going to look really really nice. So these pieces here are one inch by five and a half. Okay so it's the full width of each piece that we've made and then I've just got a half a piece overhang. So on one half of it I've just added double-sided tape so this is when you want to decide on the front so if you've got somewhere you know one that you particularly like more than others so I'm going to go for this one here okay so I'm going to just pop it in and make sure the score line lines up with the top of the box like that okay and then just look inside there and it should all be nice and neat obviously you don't want it coming down into this section here 
that's a little bit, let's just stick that, pull that up a little bit. Yeah, that's better. And then the opposite side, take your other one. And again, take my backing off and that one I'm just going to stick along the back. Okay, so now we've got these hinges. Also, probably I should have said actually add some tape to the both sides because you need to add tape to them now. Obviously, it's not otherwise it's not going to be able to stick. So, yeah, I mean it's easy to do this still, but whilst you're doing the tape when before you stuck it on, you want to stick your double-sided tape again. Again, just flip this one around. Okay, so you should have your tape on the top there. All right. and then you can lie it down flat actually and do that as well so it's not that hard to do. Okay next you've got your roof pieces here. Did I give the measurements? No I don't think I did. So these are six by six and a half. Along the six inch side you want to score at five and a half and then you want to pop double sided tape onto one of them. Don't need to do it on both but you want two pieces and you're going to take the backing off lay that one down and then this same hinge piece we're going to stick on top so just line up the bottom first because you want to make sure that it's all nice and even like so and then you can just lie that down so now you have that piece and I just thought actually if I do want to have a little handle then maybe oh it's fine I don't know what I'm going to do yet actually <laughs> then what we're going to do is stick it onto those hinges like so and it's up to you now how much overhang you want because you can have it quite low down and it just gives it a different look see I'm going to have mine quite high up and once we stick this in it will this will become obviously you know square in shape so it won't kind of move around like that but you want to make sure that you have an even overhang so I would do one side first so I'm going to take the backing off of this one here so, and I'm going to do probably about an inch, I tend to always do that, but you want to make sure that you've got even overhang, you should have half an inch overhanging on each side. So I'm just going to kind of hover it down, maybe lie it flat, do I want to lie it flat? Yeah, you can lie it flat I guess. So I'm going to make sure that I line up, if you line up, if you lie it flat actually it might help you a bit better, if you line up this side with the half inch on the next piece, and you know you've got it overhanging by half an inch and then like I said whatever you come down by you just want to make sure you do it the same on both of them so and that it stays nice and straight so I think I'm just looking in my monitor there yeah so I've got a nice even overhang there and then this one here it's quite easy to line up because you just want to make sure that you've got it this piece runs in the center so that if you're not if it comes up there you can see it's off so just bring it down until it kind of sits there then you know it's in the right place so I'm just going to take the backing off of this one here again I'm just going to look at it sideways I think that's okay and just make sure you've got a nice even overhang like so and because it's going to be facing this way it doesn't really matter if one's lower than the other but if I do go onto the side can you see it's fine it's you know I'm happy with that so there it is there's your lantern it's cool now we need to decorate it okay so I've just got some green sprigs that I had lying around. I've got this lovely red bow that I've put together and I've just got my hot glue go on, glue gun on. So I'm going to keep my decoration I think quite simple this time which is not like me but I am. <laughs> and as I mentioned at the beginning the idea is that maybe depending on how you end up connecting this I am going to stick mine down because it's something I'll just put away with my Christmas decorations and then I'll bring it out. But if it is something that you want to keep out because this is very fashionable kind of decor at the moment lots of grey lots of my friends have got grey decor everywhere and you'll see a lot of these metal lantern kind of things so it might be something that you want to keep out so just bear that in mind but like I said I am going to stick mine down so I've got my hot glue on here and I'm just going to build up these behind 
this bow just so they're all sticking out and I can curl them because this is like a metal so you know I'm not too worried how it looks initially but I'm just going to start kind of making a bit of a spray really of all this green around now I've got I have a, a glittery green glue stick in I've had them for ages and it's one of those things I, I'm always forgetting to use but I started getting them out a bit more purely because I ran out of the clear ones so it prompted me to start using these ones and then I've thought you know what they are such a good idea but you know match them more to your crafts because you often see glue sometimes sticking out whereas if this does it doesn't matter because you won't see it, it just blends in so it's a glittery green and it's really nice so let's pop some on this side so I'm just going to start building this up behind the bow Okay, that's that stuck. It's still drying a bit because there's quite a lot of layers to that. But once I start curling it up, it's going to look nice. But I've also just thought I'm going to put some bells. So I've just got my tray of them there. I've just got some of this twine. Pop that back over in its little stand. And just start kind of threading them through. Let's see how this is going to work, first of all. I've just tied it around there because I'm not sure how I'm going to have this. i just bring it up so it's going to cover a lot of that roof. I need to just see, I want them dangling down separately. I actually think I'm just going to stick them straight on. Because I'm not worried that if they don't rattle or not, it's more purely for decorative reasons. So this is all set nicely now. So I just want to start kind of just playing around with them really, just, to, just so they're not so straight. Show you there how that looks. Pretty, love it. So then I'm just going to pop quite a bit of hot glue now on the back of this because obviously this has got to stick onto that glitter glue. And over time, if it does come off, you can just glue it back on again. I've done that with many Christmas presents, you know, um, decorations. You get them out of the box and, you know, depending on whether they've been in a too colder environment or too hot, sometimes things fall off. So doesn't bother me but now I'm just going to hold that there for a second until that grips okay and now I'm just going to add some hot glue onto these and just kind of sit them on some of those green sprigs okay so that's what I've got now at the top I just it's looking beautiful and it just sparkles so much but I've been thinking I do want to have a handle so I'm going to do a circular one so with one of this the kind of pieces that we cut out from inside one of the panels I've got loads of hot glue there that I need to take off but I've got a large one and then I've got this smaller one from another project and I'm just going to sit them inside if you flip them over you'll see the cut lines you'll be able to see how big so I'm looking at a ring that's going to be three-eighths of an inch just over a quarter really in diameter so I'm going to sit those two they should go inside I don't think they're the same oh no I've got two separate ones right let's get the right ones from the this is the circle stitch dies from the works I bought these a while ago so you want to sit one inside I was gonna say this seems quite tight <laughs> but now if you bring them out you can see yeah, it's still about the same because the cut lines on them are right in the inner ring on the other one, so it's still the same. So about a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch. Sit one inside. I'm just going to cut because, I, like I said, I'm going to be saving every single bit of this cardstock. So I'm just going to grab some washi tape. And you want to create a ring. Now, the good thing, again, with this being double-sided is usually I would have to cut two and stick them back to back. But because it's obviously already got that beautiful glitter on both sides we only need to run this through once so I'm just gonna sit the inner ring so you've got a nice even border and just kind of make sure it's all there stuck nice and neat okay so you can just see that frame I got so I'm gonna run that through my dye machine okay so I've run it through and it does cut so it doesn't look like it has but you, you can see it does all come apart and now I've got that lovely ring so I'm just going to pop all that to one side and then now this is when I said oh you might not want to stick this bit together if you want to do a handle it looks beautiful without you can see there okay so don't you know think that you have to but because I've done that the idea is now that that is going to go like that yeah, I do like it because although do I want it even high? See, I like it when it's actually quite high up. So it almost looks like one of those, you know, like a big metal hoop or ring. 
So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to put some hot glue. Um, do I want hot glue? No, I'm going to use the red tape for the minute because I can always change it if, it if I feel it's not going to hold it in place. I'm just going to put some right along the bottom because it's 350 GSM. It does it doesn't you know like bend over, so it does stay up nice and straight. But I just take the backing off of that and keep this in shot. Can't even see where the tape is now. Oh, there we go. I want to get it in the middle. I just need to look at myself just so I can check that this is centred. Yeah. Just bring it down there. You see? And then it looks like it's one of those, you know, handles. And when I look at my granddad's lantern that I've got, I think I'm sure I've shared that in the lantern tutorials that I made last year. But um, he has, well, we've got two. We've got a gold one and a silver one, but they have these on there. I don't know. I just think that's a nice little touch. So it's completely optional. The actual diameter of that circle, if you're doing something similar, is three and a half for the outer ring and three for the inner. Yeah, so it's a quarter of an inch ring. So, yeah, there you have it. How cool does that look? Now I've just got my rice lights. I'm just popping them all inside. Ooh. Once they're around something, like I said, I've got like um, my Christmas trees that I'm going to pop in here. And because it's open on the sides here, you can always pin like the top light. You could pin it on the side there with something. But how pretty does that look? And then the battery pack will be hidden with whatever's going to be in here. Or if not, I will take it out because it's got a long piece before the actual start of the rice lights, which is like there. So I could hook that out and that piece can be hidden somewhere else. So all you see inside are all those gorgeous rice lights. I love this. Oh my gosh, I really, really do. This glitter card is amazing. Because it's got that strength, it allows you to make these things. And because it's double-sided, just look at the lovely detail inside it there. It just, it looks really finished. It's just a lovely, lovely project. And it's really easy to do. And it would look really nice in craft card, do a really nice vintage one and distress it and all that kind of lovely stuff. So there's lots of ways to recreate this, but I'm gonna keep it on its side like that just so you can see it. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. As always, all the links to everything I've used will be shared below. And along with all the measurements and everything will always be over on my blog. So yeah, thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and consider subscribing so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.